Do you want to have a more peaceful home with less meltdowns where your child can regulate their own emotions and so there's less drama? In this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can teach your child to manage their emotions so there will be fewer out of control meltdowns in your home. And I have some free printables to share with you and some good deals and this is brought to you by HP. Hi, I'm Abigail and I'm a parenting coach. I help moms with distracted kids uncover their kids' gifts and unlock their powers of focus. So exactly how young am I talking about? Yes, I'm talking about your toddlers, your preschoolers, your primary school students or elementary kids. And some of management is that one skill we haven't been really taught explicitly when we were younger. And whatever we learned along the way, it was through life experiences and trial and error that we try to figure it out. And a lot of us still have not figured it out yet. Our kids can get a head start if we start learning it ourselves, modeling it to our kids, and then teach emotional regulation to our kids. Stay to the end because I'm going to be teaching you a four-step process that you can apply right now in your home to teach your kids how to deal with emotions in a productive way. Our kids can start this process by learning the vocabulary related to emotions. And this is something that doesn't come very consciously to us sometimes because when we think about teaching a toddler, we think about teaching colors, we think about teaching uh, names of objects, names of people, but we don't really teach them the names of the emotion. So when my baby was very young, about one plus, she was learning how to talk. And when she gets really angry, uh, we would ask her, Hey Ariel, are you feeling angry? Are you feeling upset? And when she was able to link that emotion with the word, she was able to quickly say, upset. It was really, really cute. And now when she's older, just recently last week, she fell and she was crying. So we picked her up and after dusting her off, we asked her, so are you okay? Is your body hurt or your feelings hurt? To our surprise, because it was one of those few, first few times we asked her this question, she said, my feelings are hurt. Then we further asked her, oh, are you feeling um, ashamed? Are you feeling embarrassed because you fell and you thought your siblings might laugh at you? And she said, yes. So that is how we we begin to teach our kids the language of emotion right when they are very, very young. This is the first printable I have for you where it is an emotion wheel. Top tip. Since my kids were babies, I have always used adult language to talk to them. I will use the most accurate vocabulary words to describe the situation or emotion. I'm not going to say, oh, because you're babies, you can only handle and happy, angry, and sad. And then when you're older, I will introduce to you more complex vocabulary words. I think there's no need to do that. In fact, the babies are just absorbing everything that you say to them in the language that they hear. So with this emotion wheel, my child is able to tell me what emotions she may be feeling just by pointing to the wheel. So this printable can be downloaded from the free HP Printables website with the new ink subscription service called HP Instant Ink. It's super convenient for us consumers. I can decide on a monthly plan. The plan starts from 190 per month. With a smart tracking system, the printer will automatically order the ink before I run out of them and HP will send me the ink directly to my doorstep without me stepping out of the house to go to the shops to buy them. You can sign up for a free three month ink subscription service and I'll put the link in the description below. I promised you a four step process that's gonna help us manage our emotions in a productive manner, right? So step number one is to not react. It takes tremendous self-control, especially for a child to not react to that situation. So don't expect your young child to be able to do this right away. But definitely we can start teaching him or her that process to begin to be even aware of the possibility that he or she has control over their emotions and they do not have to react straight away. So there are a couple of things that we can teach them how to do or what to do to buy them time so that they can not react immediately. Take deep breaths and then breathe out. If your child is very into blowing candles for a birthday cake, get them to hold up five fingers and they can blow on each finger as if each finger is a candle and then they're blowing out the flame. The other activity that we can get them is to help them to focus on the falling stars of a calm down glitter jar. This is something that my daughter and I made as a fun activity, made on another day. And because she made it with me, it made her more willing to grab this tool to calm down when she's angry. And the third activity, let's say we do not have the glitter jar with us, what else can we do? We can teach our kids to hug themselves, we can teach our kids to tap. Or we can teach our kids to focus on one of their senses. For example, focus on the color of the trees 
in the distance, or the details of an object, or hear the sound of the cars in the background, or smell the turmeric from the curry that's cooking in the kitchen. So recently, I've been under much stress myself. And the silver lining that came out of the last couple of months is that every time I felt like lashing out, I would take deep breaths. I didn't even realize it. And it was my son who pointed it out. Hey, mom's doing that weird breathing thing again. She must be angry. It's probably funny to him, but I'm really glad he noticed what I'm trying to do. So when it comes to managing our emotions, this is one of those things when do as I say, not as I do, just does not fly. It's hypocritical and our kids are excellent at calling us out on these double standards. And step number two is to teach them to ride the emotion wave. We tell the child emotions come and emotions will go. They will come, they will rise, they will peak, and then they will fall off and subside. So teach them that they do not have to be scared that the uncomfortable feeling will be there forever. But we want to encourage them to stay with the emotion, locate where are they feeling that emotion? Is it in their stomach? Is it in their chest? Is it in their head? And we want to teach them, encourage them that it is uncomfortable, but stay with it. They can handle the discomfort. Step number three is to identify what emotions we are feeling. And I come back to the emotion wheel that I talked about in the first part of the video. So the manifest emotion may be anger, but there are usually a lot more complex underlying emotions there. So anger is the emotion that usually makes us powerful and more in control of the situation. But if we dig deeper, underneath the anger is actually a lot, a lot of other complex layers, right? It's usually maybe guilt or shame or insecurity or inferiority, disappointment, despair, helplessness, jealousy. So anger is usually a cover up of all these more dangerous emotions that threaten our identity and the true work that we need Need to do within ourselves. So once we put a name to the emotion, it feels better to us and to the child. Because now we know what we feel, it's no longer a morphing, uncontainable, uncontrollable thing that threatens to overwhelm us. We now have a label and a language to contain this emotion and therefore that makes the problem much more solvable and puts the control back in our hands. So being an ex-English teacher, I can't resist, but I have to sneak in an English vocab exercise right here. Since we are dealing with emotions so much, I thought, yeah, why don't we learn some stock phrases to describe anger so that your child can use in his compositions and impress the English teacher. But I think the real value of this exercise is to ask your child to go through and draw or reflect upon what was the last or most memorable anger episode that he had and draw it out. After that, he can try to put into words what exactly he was describing. And when he's able to come up with his own description, then it becomes no longer a stock phrase that you see on composition books, but it becomes something very real, very authentic and memorable to him. And definitely he will be able to use it in his own compositions with ease and confidence. So download these printables from the HP website. And if you are looking to buy a printer, HP is giving out a free three month ink subscription service that allows you to print more than 1,500 pages. With Instant Ink, you get the convenience of the ink delivered to your doorstep. You get to save up to 50%. And you get to do your bit for the environment because HP will give you a paid return envelope that you can put the empty cartridges in and mail it back to them. And I've not forgotten step four. Step four is after you have bought yourself time to not react, you have stayed with the emotion, you have identified the emotion, and now it is time to solve the problem. When we have gone through the three steps, we are able to nail down what exactly is the emotion we're feeling, what is the issue that's causing us to feel this discomfort, and then what can we do about this issue? Do we even want to do anything about this? Can the problem even be solved? How can we solve this problem? So the emotion that we're feeling will lead us to learn something about ourselves, and maybe it will propel us to do something that will change the situation for the better. So why is emotional regulation such an important life skill? Because when our kids cannot regulate their emotion, they are like a fireball, a wrecking ball, in our house and, and with one kid you have one wrecking ball, right? With three kids you have three. And it's going to really, really affect the quality of our family life when we are always dealing with these outbursts day in, day out, kid one, two and three. And when our kids are in that mode, they are often in fight, flight or freeze mode. They're not in an optimal place to do those higher level things like learning, like being creative, like being focused on an activity because they're still dealing with their emotions at a very basic level. And we don't ever learn how to process our feelings and we skip steps two and three, staying with our feelings and then identifying our feelings. We don't learn as well from our mistakes and we don't move on to be better versions of ourselves. 
So I definitely want to encourage you as parents, this is our number one homework that we want to do for ourselves. And when we do that for ourselves, we can then model and teach the same process to our kids. So let me know in the comments, which step are you missing in the way you're dealing with your emotions and what are you most excited to try? So I have more videos for you to learn about how to manage your own anger as a parent. You can watch this video right here. And to download more printables and see more videos in the HP Learning series, you can click on the playlist here. And remember to sign up for your three months of free instant ink. Link below. And I'll see you in my next video. See you. Bye.